Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. 101 Solve Mechanical Engineering Problems, HVAC 11. A quick word on this problem, this one is a bit advanced, not in the sense that anything in here is earth shattering or things that you shouldn't know, but it's a long, tedious problem, probably not something you would be asked to do by hand. So if you're just getting started in your prep, maybe don't start with this one. If you've done a lot of other similar problems, then you're probably ready to try this. 20,000 cubic feet per hour based on dry air at 60 degrees and 14.7 PSIA of air are compressed to 100 PSIA and 500 degrees. The air is subsequently cooled to 75 degrees in a constant volume process that also saturates it. The compressor suction conditions are 13.4 PSIA, 85 degrees dry bulb, and 80% relative humidity. And they want to know A, how much water in pounds per hour must be supplied or removed to saturate the cooled air? B, what is the specific humidity of the air entering the cooling process? And C, what is the specific humidity of the air leaving the cooling process? So let's draw all these processes that are going on first so that we can get a sense of the sequence. We have this air that's initially based on some conditions 60 degrees and 14.7 but then it says that the compressor suction conditions are 13.4 and 85 degrees. So something's happening between the initial air and the compressor suction side. We don't know what's happening before that compressor inlet. So really the only thing we have to worry about these initial conditions are is in determining the mass flow rate of air. We would want to base it on a specific volume that corresponds to this temperature and pressure. But by the time it gets to the compressor inlet, we really care about these conditions down below. So I'm going to define state 1 as being those compressor inlet conditions, which is P equals 13.4 PSIA, and the temperature equals 85 degrees, and the relative humidity is 80%. That's state 1, and that enters a compressor. And then when it exits the compressor, let's call that state 2, we know the temperature and pressure are 500 degrees and 100 PSIA. And then, that goes to another process, which we've been told is a cooling process at constant volume. And they say that this process saturates it. And then question A asks, how much water is being supplied or removed to saturate the cooled air? So it could be that water needs to be added in order to saturate it. Or it could be that by virtue of it being cooled, it's cooled past its dew point and water comes out of it. So there's some water being added or removed at this point, and we don't know what direction it's going. And then after the cooling process, it comes out, and we'll call this state three now. We know the temperature and humidity. The temperature is 75 degrees, and the humidity is 100%. It's saturated. So that at least frames out what's happening in this problem. Part A, where they ask how much water is being added or removed, that's going to depend on the difference between the humidity ratios at state two and state three and parts B and C ask about that. B asks about the specific humidity of the air entering the cooling process at state two, and C asks about the specific humidity of the air leaving the cooling process, which is state three. So we're gonna do B and C first, get those specific humidities, and that will allow us to find the answer to A. So let's start with the specific humidity entering the cooling process. So the first observation is that in the compression, there's no mass added or lost as we go from state one to state two. No mass added or lost from state two. So however much water vapor is in the air, however much dry air there is, and however much water vapor there is before the compression process, that whole mass is being compressed. So the mass isn't different at the end, it's just at a higher pressure. So the humidity ratio at two is the same as the humidity ratio at one. And normally we say if we know any two things about air, whether that be temperature and humidity or any other two things, that that's enough to say the state is fully defined. Well, that's only true when we're dealing with atmospheric pressure, which we usually are. We solve loads of problems where the assumption is that we're at atmospheric pressure, 14.7 PSIA. 
and the psychrometric char is based on that assumption. Every point on the psychrometric char assumes that we're still at atmospheric pressure. But in this problem, we're dealing with some different pressures. We have this inlet condition of the compressor, which is not atmospheric, and then it's raising the pressure tremendously to 100 PSIA, so that's far from atmospheric. And then after the constant volume cooling process, we haven't been told that that resulting output is at atmospheric pressure, so we shouldn't necessarily assume it is. So we really need three parameters to fully define a state if the pressure isn't known. And probably the pressure would be the third thing that we would want to know in order to make that work. So state one is fully defined in the sense that we know three things about it, including temperature, humidity, and pressure. So in theory, we can find out anything else we want to know about it. So before doing this in a manual way, I'm going to get the answer in a quick and convenient way that wouldn't be available to you during a test. I'm going to put it in a psychrometric calculator, but then I'll show you a manual alternate way to get the same thing. So we know this pressure is 13.4 PSIA, and we know the temperature is 85 degrees, and we know the relative humidity is 80%. So if I put all of those into my psychrometric calculator, which by the way, if you want to do this yourself as you're practicing, go to www.mechanicalpeexamprep and I have links to the psychrometric calculator on the site. So the specific humidity at state one is 0 0.02297 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And again, since no mass is added or removed during the compression process from state one to two, the specific humidity is the same at state one as it is at state two. So omega two equals omega one, and this is our answer to part B but well, we want to do it manually. So I'll just make a note that this was with the site calc. Now we'll look at a manual alternative. 